This is Brett here with the Tuning School and today we're going to be talking about the benefits to smoking a vehicle. Hey guys, occasionally when you're tuning, you're going to find problems with vacuum leaks, boost leaks, and exhaust leaks. A couple, a couple of the common problems that you'll see is you'll be tuning at idle and part throttle and the fuel trims are adding 15%. So it seems easy enough. You go into the math curve or the VE table, you add 15%. You go back and scan the car and they're still adding 15%. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Another thing that can happen is sometimes your O2 sensors won't read good. And you can't figure out why your narrow bands can't get good O2 sensor readings. You replace the sensors, you do all this other stuff, it's still not working out well. Or in a boosted application, you could be trying to achieve a certain amount of boost and you're not getting there. And so your fueling's all off or the customer, the car was dialing great, took it home, messed with some stuff, and now the fueling's all off and the boost isn't being achieved and all these other things. These are all problems that you're going to waste a bunch of time on. And a great solution for this is a smoker. A lot of guys in the industry, before they touch a car, will smoke a car. And you can get really good at telling if you need to smoke the car uh, because you can see right there in the fuel trims or the narrow bands or whatever it may be. So it's a great thing to invest in because it's going to save you a lot of time and money. All right, so for those of you that have never smoked a car before or have never seen one smoked, I'm just going to go through a real quick setup on typically how it's done and how it works with our machine. So this is our smoke machine right here. All it does is it burns oil to create smoke. Uh, you have to connect it to an air source and then it connects to your battery. So typically you can just hang it right here you're good to go. Now you take these two wires here, they got alligator clips on the end, and they'll just hook up to the negative and positive side of your battery. Fairly simple. All right, now it has power and there should be a little green light on the top of it right here and so on. Now you need to hook the vacuum line into a vacuum source. So you need to pull anywhere off the intake manifold, any vacuum line, anything like that. So on this car and most cars, we'll pull the uh, vacuum tube right on the brake booster. That's a good place, easy to get to, um, fairly simple to do. So after you hook that up, the last thing that you're gonna wanna do is you have to cap the air filter. Now, the reason you cap it is so the smoke doesn't come out of the air filter, pretty self-explanatory. Now, what's really key is if you have a MAF sensor installed on the car, you want to get the cap as close to the mass airflow sensor as you can. The reason for this is, is if it's a long ways after the mass airflow sensor, you could be picked, there could be leaks between that gap where the cap is and where the mass airflow sensor is at. So if you can get it as close as the mass airflow sensor as you can, it'd be great. Now, our mass airflow sensor is, it's a blow through style, so it's mounted way down in the, pipe, in the charge piping leading to the motor. So it'll be okay. With this car, it's a boosted car. And for boosted cars, there's a lot more places to leak. And so you kind of want to maybe get under the car so you can see all the piping. There's lots of rubber couplers, lots of places for it to leak. Just make sure all that's good. So uh, boost reference at the brake booster and then cap at the filter and you're good to go. Okay, so as you can see from this clip here, this is us smoking the exhaust system on our Trans Am. Now you wanna do this if you think there might be a, like a leak around the exhaust flange where the headers connect to the exhaust system or a, an exhaust manifold gasket leak or anything like that. Uh, typically the good place to do it is pull an O2 sensor or like a secondary O2 sensor and put the, the smoke source into it and then wrap, wrap it in a bunch of electrical tape to kind of seal it up real good. And then you have to cap the tailpipes. So now the smoke is all encapsulated inside of it and it'll help you find your leak. So here we are guys with our customer's O3 Cobra. Now, this is a customer that wants to get a dyno tune and what we typically do with our customers that want a dyno tune is they come in ahead of time and we smoke the car. The reason for that is it's going to save us time and money as well as the customer time and money down the road when we get it on the dyno. With this particular car, the EGR actually leaks. Now what that's going to do is since the EGR is after the mass airflow sensor, it's going to be sucking in additional air during idle and part throttle. That's gonna create rich fuel trims for idle and part throttle. Now, this customer is complaining about a lack of power at wide open throttle. He said it seems like it bogs, like it's just not what it used to be. And the reason for that is, is because he's got the EGR leak, is he's got too much fuel at wide open throttle because when it, uh, what is a vacuum leak at idle and part throttle becomes a boost leak at wide open throttle. So as the air is escaping, from the EGR leak, 
where it's actually got less air than the mass, air, mass airflow sensor thinks. And so because of that, it's creating a, wit, a rich condition in the motor, which is causing his loss of power. So now that we know this, we're going to be able to advise the customer on how to fix it, and he can come back and try again. Something else, though, the last thing is we need to make sure that after we fix the EGR, we re-smoke this vehicle. Because now that we fix the EGR, we're going to have more pressure inside the motor, and it could create another leak somewhere else, or it could reveal another leak somewhere else. So even though we found this EGR leak, doesn't mean it's the only leak. You need to fix that and then smoke it again and make sure that you're good to go. I hope you guys learned something from this video and that it'll save you some time in the future. If you have any questions, feel free to call us here at the Tuning School at 727-264-8875. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.